was too old to be doing the slip and slide like I was doing. <laughs> I guess I'm the certified spider killer. <laughs> prayer chapel. I have the privilege of introducing you to our student chaplains. You have probably already seen them up front. You have seen them in the hallways. You recognize them, but lest you forget, student chaplains have responsibilities to care for the spiritual lives of students. They're involved in the prayer ministries. 
They help formulate plans for chapel. They help facilitate Life Together Group for new students. Today you'll be hearing from both of our student chaplains. Nate Johnson is a senior sports management major. He's a basketball player, has been involved in leadership on our campus in a number of ways. He's thoughtful, he's a relational leader, and maybe most significantly, he's a newlywed who got married on August the 8th to Mabry. So congratulations to the two of you. And in, in addition to Nate, we have Liz Kemp, who's a nursing major in her junior year. She is compassionate, energetic, with a heart to serve others. She is a softball player, and we're excited to have these two as part of our spiritual life leadership team. I commend them to you. Should you desire to have conversations around spiritual life and what God is doing in your life, these would be two wonderful people to seek out. And I'm sure that they would enjoy having that conversation with you. Today our procedure will be guided by our theme verse. We will talk about community, we'll talk about going deeper, and we will express our thanksgiving for the many blessings that we share in Christ. And I encourage you, whether you're watching uh, remotely or you're here in the room, to engage. To set aside the distractions, to enter into this space where we can talk to our Heavenly Father. Let's begin our time by doing just that. Will you bow with me as we open our time in prayer? Father, as we have indicated already, we are a people in need. We think of the unrest in Wisconsin, Portland, and across our land. And we think about our own needs on as a campus. And now we open up the invitation that you would bring your sufficiency, your peace to these matters. Help us to see you in fresh ways. That as our need is evident, so would your goodness be. Help us now to recognize you in our midst as we humble ourselves before you as we pray full of faith and anticipation of your work among us this day and this year. In your name, amen. Will you stand as we worship? What love could remember No wrongs we have done Omniscient, all-knowing He counts not their sum Thrown into a sea of God. 
kindness he lavished on us. His blood was the payment, his life was the cost. We stood neath the death we could never afford. Our sins they are many, his mercy is none. Praise the with us in the faith may be effective in deepening your understanding of every good thing we share for the sake of Christ. So I want to talk to you guys about that first part of that verse. It says, I pray that your partnership, and the ESV says, I pray that the sharing of your faith. So I'm talking about community. So this portion of the verse means that we need to come together as a body to push each other further in our faith. So a partnership is kind of like a team. So there are major players and then there are minor players and there are players that go in for five minutes and players that play the whole time. But without every single part of that team, that team's not as effective as it could be if every single person was together. So without one person in this room to partnership with each other, we will lack as a body. We need every single person here to partner with us and our crown community to pursue the Lord together. From the beginning of creation, the Lord said, it is not good that man should be alone. Faith is not a one-man job. We are the body of Christ, and a body much like a team has many parts, some major and some minor. You don't think you need your pinky finger or your elbow until you don't have it. You might be sitting here thinking this body doesn't need you, but it does. Without each one of you, the body of Christ here at Crown College won't be as fruitful as it could be. So we're going to enter into a time of prayer. This prayer is called Waterfall Prayer. It might be new to some of you, and it's kind of uncomfortable, but it's good uncomfortable. So what we're going to do is everyone is going to pray out loud. Pray a prayer for community. Pray that you find a community. Pray that you share with the people around you eventually something about your faith, something about who you are. So we're all going to pray quietly. You can whisper, you can yell, you can do whatever you want. But just pray out loud a prayer for community, and then I will close us in a minute or so. So whenever you guys are ready, you can start. just want to lift up every single thing that's been said in this room and over the live stream, God. I know that 
community can be scary to some people. It can be hard to open up. It can be hard to be yourself, God. But I just pray that us as a campus can follow Philemon verse 6 and can partner together as a whole to um, share our faith and to become one, God. I just lift up this year and that we step out boldly and um, we grow deeper together. We pray all this in your name. Amen. bow our hearts, we bend our knees, oh spirit come make us humble, we turn our eyes from evil things, oh Lord we cast down our idols, give us clean hands, Give us pure hearts, let us not lift our souls to another, give us clean hands, give us pure hearts, let us not lift our souls to another, and God let us be a generation. continue in an attitude of prayer and reflection on our verse. The verse tells us that as we share in this community that we've been praying about, heard about, that community of faith will be effective, that dynamic of community will be effective in deepening your understanding of every good thing we share in Christ. You know, the scriptures are pretty clear about 
the role of the mind in our spiritual journey. We're told in Romans 12 that we are called to tr be transformed by the renewing of our minds. Colossians chapter 3 tells us that we are to set our minds on the things above, not the things on earth. Matthew chapter 22 tells us that we are to love the Lord our God with all our heart, soul, our mind, and our strength. The authors of scripture seem to understand something, and that is that our minds are like a sponge. Whatever you dip a sponge in, it naturally attracts the surrounding fluid. So if you dip the sponge in Mountain Dew, Mountain Dew fills the sponge. If you dip the sponge in coffee, coffee fills the sponge. What we subject our minds to fills our minds. The authors of scripture also know that the world has a dulling impact on our lives. That we need instruction. We need truth. That our minds might be pure. That our mind might be holy. Devoted to God. That we might deepen our understanding. Deepen our discernment. Deepen our wisdom. Our culture today seems to be much about image branding and marketing oneself, curating every photo. But the longing of our souls today and the great need of our world today is for deep people. People with ability to understand and discern the profound things of God that go beyond the image, go beyond the external, and have an internal deep knowledge of God. So today, I call us to a deeper understanding. I invite us to go deep with God. So let's take a moment to have a silent prayer, a prayer for clear thinking, for greater understanding, for deeper wisdom. And after a few moments, I will close our time in prayer. Will you pray now silently before God for a deeper understanding? Father, would you help us to recognize our need to go deeper with you? Would you expose the reality that sometimes our lives can be shallow, that our minds are distracted or given to impure things? Would you call us back to purity? Would you renew our minds that we might be transformed people in our world? that we might think your thoughts. Help us to love you with all of our mind, as well as our heart, our soul, and our strength. And God, would you give us discipline that when tempted, we might steady ourselves in the truth of the scriptures, walk in obedience to you, that we would give our minds to things that please you. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's stand together. In Christ alone, my hope is found. He is my light, my strength, my song, this cornerstone. This solid ground, firm through the fiercest drought and storm. What heights of love, what depths of peace. When fears are still, when striving cease. My comforter, my all in all, here in the love of Christ. I stand in Christ. 
Christ alone who took on flesh fullness of God in hell this babe this gift of love and righteousness scorned by the ones he came to save till on that cross as Jesus died with us in the faith may be effective in deepening your understanding of every good thing we share for the sake of Christ. We've read this now three times. This is our theme verse for the year, Philemon 1.6. I'm focusing on the last line, the conclusion of what our theme is this year. So each part that Liz and Bill each shared before, it all ties together here at the end. Um, the last line reads, everything, every good thing we share in Christ. And if you backtrack a few words, it says our understanding in every good thing. So this is something that we already know. This isn't some like shock to us. We know that there, every good thing comes from God. We share these good things. This is not just one person that gets all these blessings. It's not just, you know, yeah, I get all the blessings and you guys get nothing. That's not how this works. God shares his love, his joy, his peace, his forgiveness with everyone. And all the blessings is God given. And when we think of blessings, sometimes we think of the big things like, hey, I found $100 on the ground, that's a blessing. But what about the simple things in life? Like, raise your hands, how many people woke up this morning? Yeah, every single person's hand should be up. That's a blessing. God gave us this day 
to go out and shine his light and share the gospel. That's a blessing. We should be thankful for that. That's what this last part of the verse is about, about being thankful and having thankfulness in our hearts. We should continually thank the Lord for all his blessings in, his, in our lives. And we should express our thankfulness daily. So for our time of prayer, we're going to take a moment if you want to do this silently, if you want to speak to yourself, whatever you're feeling comfortable. Let's take a time of thankfulness and self-reflection and let's thank the Lord of all the great things he's done in our lives and all the blessings that are in our lives. Dear Heavenly Father, I just want to lift up um, all these blessings that people just expressed to you. You are a good God, and we know that every good thing comes from you. And just uh, pray that you will continue to bless us as a, a body of Christ. And throughout this year, that we'd all be safe and healthy and be able to get up every morning with this feeling of thankfulness and this desire to know you more to go deeper together and to shine your light and to share the gospel. I pray this in your holy name. Amen. Would you stand as we sing, Thank You, Jesus?
voices. Pray with me. Lord, it is our privilege to be your children and to come before you in prayer. You are our Heavenly Father. We thank you for Liz and Nate, our student chaplains, and ask your blessing on them this year. May they challenge us as a campus to walk more closely with you and to love you more dearly. Encourage them as they encourage us. Thank you for our worship team that continues to bring us into your presence. Lord, you have brought us together as a campus, as a unique community to worship and to pray and to follow you and to deepen our understanding of the good things that we have in Christ. Would you help us to do that this year? Would you look down upon us with your favor? Smile upon your people here at Crown. Cause us to make wise decisions as we walk with you, that we might live by the Spirit and not carry out the deeds of the flesh. Help us to celebrate not only you and the good things you give us, but celebrate one another. The unique people that you've put around us that help shape our community and help shape our own lives. And remind us that we are students, students of your word, students within our majors, within our classes. Help us to apply ourselves to diligent study. We love you, Lord. You have rescued us. You have freed us. You are indeed our life. And there is no substitutes to you. Be exalted above everything at Crown College. Be Lord over it all. And we ask this in the mighty name of Jesus, our Savior. And all God's children said, Amen. Amen. Go in God's peace. You are dismissed.